So in this video, you're going to learn how to solve these kinetic energy time of flight mass spec questions. Now, I would like you guys to pause the video and attempt it yourself, okay? Learn from your mistakes. I'm gonna go through it step by step, but if you could pause the video, get out your notebook and really attempt this question, it's gonna help you out so much and you'll learn from your mistakes. So the kinetic energy of an ion is given by the following equation. This right here is always given to you. So don't stress about remembering it. What you do need to know is the units, okay? So they've told us Ke equals kinetic energy, m equals mass, and v equals speed or velocity, okay? Now, in a time of flight mass spectrometer, each 84 krypton ion is accelerated to a kinetic energy of this number right here. I'm gonna underline that for later use. And the time of flight is 1.72 times 10 to minus five. Calculate the length in meters. So that's what they want. They want the length in meters of the flight tube and they've given us good old Avogadro constant. So think to yourself, where would I go from here? What do I, what do I have? What have they given me in the question that I can use to my advantage? So kinetic energy, do we have that? Yes, we do, it's given right here, okay? Mass, do we have that? No, we don't, but we can calculate from this because they've given us the mass number of the ion. So we can calculate that. Next up is speed. Do we have the speed here? No, we don't. So there's something missing here that you really need to be aware of, and that's the other variables that we're considering. So what I'm gonna do quickly actually is go through the units and then I'll explain the other equation afterwards. So the first thing is kinetic energy. What are the units for this? Okay, it's an energy. They like to see it in joules, okay? So I'm gonna put that right here, joules. What is mass in? Is that grams? No, it's not, okay. Unique case for time of flight mass spec is kilograms is our mass unit. Really, really important to get your head around this. It is a unique case. Speed, what about this? What is the units for speed? Meters per second. So where I'm gonna go from here is the other equation you need to know. Now, the way I remembered it is V equals D over T, okay? V is exactly the same as this, okay? Our speed or our velocity equals D. What is this? This is our distance. Or in other words, the length of the flight tube, okay? So this right here is our distance or D, and that is our length of the flight tube, okay? And this is in meters. This is T time. Okay, really simple in there, and that's in seconds. Now, the reason that I remember this as V equals D over T is because if I just, my brain freaks out in the exam and I can't remember what the equation is, I can work it out from the units because this is simply meters per second, what is per divided by seconds. So this unit right here gives us the equation for this. And that's honestly a super useful trick for a lot of equations, right? So what I want to emphasize to you here is that you can take this equation right here, rearrange it as needed, and plug that variable into this equation. So if you're a bit confused, don't worry, I'm gonna break it down step by step in the question. So we've discussed what they want us to find. They want us to find the length, which is this guy right here, okay? So what we need to do is we need to manipulate these expressions in some way in order to find this. So we need the other variables in order to do so, right? So let's break it down. What do we want to do first? We would want to find our first missing variable, which is our mass. How do we do that? So they've given us the mass number of this krypton ion, okay? So what we can do here is we can use our units and cancel them in order to find the mass because that's what we ultimately want. So if we looked at the atomic mass, the relative atomic mass of this 84 krypton ion, it has a mass of 84, right? What is the unit for this? Is it grams, kilograms? It's grams per mole, okay? That's just what the relative atomic mass units are or relative molecular mass units, also known as MR, right? Now, what you want to do here is you want to divide it by this guy right here, okay? Now the reason for that is, is because the units of Avogadro constant is per mole, okay? So what you do then is if you divide this by Avogadro, I'm gonna give that the symbol L and the units are per mole, the per moles cancel and you're just left with grams, okay? And that is our mass in grams. So then if we do this, it's gonna be 84 divided by 
6.022 times 10 to the 23. Okay, if you plug that in your calculator, you're going to get an answer of 1.394885 times 10 to the minus 22. Okay, now what are the units for this? Remember I said it, it leaves grams. So that's grams right here. Is grams the correct unit for our mass here? No, it's not. We want kilograms, okay? So what we're going to have to do is simply convert it from grams into kilograms. How do you do that? Divide by a thousand, okay? So an easy way to divide by a thousand is you can either just do it on your calculator or you can use the indices rules. And if you're doing divide by a thousand, that's the same thing as times 10 to minus three. You can use the indices rules to minus three from here. So it's going to be 1.394885 times 10 to the minus 25. Okay, and that's going to be kilograms this time. Okay, and that is the unit that we want. So we're happy with this. Our mass equals this. Okay. So over here, this AR, even though AR was 84, ultimately what I was doing in this calculation was looking for mass. Okay. Right. Awesome. So let's tick that off. So we've got got the mass now all good to go so you want to take this approach to pretty much every calculation in chemistry if you have a three variable calculation so we have an m a v squared and a ke if you have two of the three so for example we have kinetic energy and we have mass you want to rearrange it to make the unknown the subject okay and so that in this case is v squared right that's exactly what i'm going to do so let's write this out ke equals half mv squared. If I want to rearrange that to make v squared the subject, it's just going to be v squared equals divide both sides by m and times by 2 because we've got a half here. So it's going to be 2ke over m. All right. Now, if we want to get rid of this square root, all we have to do is square root both sides. So it's going to be v equals square root 2ke over m. All right. So now hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. We're going to work out what V is, and then we're going to feed that into this equation, rearranged to make D or the length of the flight tube the subject. Okay, so let's just plug in our variables right here. So we're going to have square root everything to lots of what is our kinetic energy given to us in the question 4.83 times 10 to the minus 16. Do not worry about units, just get those numbers on the page. And then our mass is going to be what we just calculated, 1.394885 times 10 to the minus 25. Now, if you put this in your calculator, you should get an answer of 83,218.399 times 2. Something around there, okay? Depending on how many decimal places you put in. Now, what is the units of this? This is our velocity. Okay, so that is meters per second. So I'm writing the units here, but you honestly don't need to show them through your working. Okay, I just want you to get your head wrapped around the conversions and what is required. So what we can say here then is that if they want the length of the flight tube, aka D, we can make D the subject by rearranging this. Okay, so all you have to do here is times both sides by T. So therefore, D equals V times T. Okay, now... Do we have V? Yes, we do. We just calculated it. All right. So V is right here. Do we have T? Yes. Given to you in the question 1.72. Let's do that right now. 83,218.39992 multiplied by our time 1.72 times 10 to the minus 5. Plug that in your calculator and you'll get an answer of 1.43 one three five six four seven nine so that's the full answer that the calculator spits out right is that our final answer no it's not right so what you want to do is take a look at the data what is the lowest number of sig figs that have been given to us so this is three this is three and this is four okay so the lowest number there is three so that's exactly what i'm going to do for my number of significant figures for my final output 1.43 Okay, and that's two, three sig figs. Cool. So that's pretty much how you'd solve one of these time of flight mess back calculations. There's a couple of things I want to emphasize to you here, okay? 
little bit of adaptability is required, a little bit of problem solving. You have to think to yourself, which variables have I been given in the question and which one is missing from here? And how do I use this equation to fill in the blanks, okay? If you master the ability of rearranging equations and solving for whatever you make the subject, as well as taking note of the lowest number of significant figures for all of your calculation style question answers, the final answers, I mean, try not to round down mid working, okay? Avoid that mistake that's been on the examiner's report a few times and you'll be all good to go. If you're not too sure where to take your revision next, guys, I highly recommend checking out my what topics to focus on videos for papers one, two, and three. It's gonna help you realize which topics come up the most and where to focus your revision. Best of luck with your studying and exams, guys. Until next time, peace.